Hey, I'm Trey Smith, and in 1999, I committed a safe robbery on the television evangelist Mike Murdoch. Not my most bright decision making. So this is Dallas Magazine, and that's Mike Murdoch right there holding the Bible. He looks kind of angry in that picture, and that's me running with a safe on my back. Now, who Mike Murdoch is? He's a fundraiser. He's a common fundraiser for Benny Hinn. He's also one of the main fundraisers that you'll see on Daystar Television. You might not think it, but it's actually a lot of work to get a safe into the back of a Cadillac. Can you give an offering to God and not receive a harvest? Millions have. Now, Thieves, this book that I'm holding in my hand, this is a true story. This is my life story. It's not a children's book. It's not even a Christian book, even though it's got a TV pastor in it. This is... This could offend some of the ladies at the church choir. It's a true safe robbery story. And this is what the websites for it look like. You can find it on iPad, Kindle, and that kind of thing. One of the sites is called Trey's Nutshell, and you'll find information about thieves all over the place. In this video, we're going to go over some of the evidence from the Mike Murdoch safe robbery, including the police report and some questions that I've got. Maybe you as a viewer can actually help me find some of the answers. See, from my side of the fence, I know what it's like running from a TV pastor. I know what it's like making a horribly stupid decision to rob a TV pastor. But I did not know all of the fiascos that were going on beyond, behind the scenes with Mike Murdoch himself. So, let's get started. So here's the police report for the event. And what it says here, if I can get a zoom in on this, is that the on Monday 3-22-99, iDeputy so-and-so was dispatched to a burglary. So this is one of the nicest areas of Dallas, Texas, or outside Dallas. And the mansion estate of Mike Murdoch was palatial in size. He had limousine there. He had, uh, at times, he had pets. The examples of pets might be a pet lion that he owned, camels, these kind of things. That actually, some of them were in the lawn. Of course, the lion was in a cage. Inside the closet was uh, four cabinets. One was jewelry. One was coins. One was stamps. The last one was a pornography cabinet, which was actually more well-organized than the other three. At the back of the closet was the safe, which I took in 99. Now, the reason that I knew about the safe, and I grew up with Mike Murdoch's son, Jason Murdoch. So I was in and out of that property a lot as a kid. In fact, I was inside that closet quite frequently, which is how, of course, I knew the safe was there. Now, it's mentioned in the police report that uh, unknown persons forced open the closet door and they removed the jewelry and coin collection from the closet. So this is the initial police report for the Mike Murdoch safe robbery stated a coin and jewelry collection valued at $125,000. This was actually a lot. This was not true. This was false, what, uh, what was stated there. Now, as my understanding that Mike Murdoch went on to tell audiences that he had lost, in some cases, millions of dollars. I've heard here recently, I've gotten emails from folks that said that it, at some seminars he may have collected as much as $1.5 million from single donors at large church events. We're going to get to that. Here's the actual notes from the detectives following the safe robbery of Mike Murdoch. Now mind you, I ran to now mind you when this all happened and went down, I left and I went to Mexico for a time. I had investigators contacting my family. But here's what was happening behind the scenes. I didn't know what was going on with Mike Murdoch. I only knew what was going on with me, which is what I wrote about in my book Thieves. Was what was it, you know, what it's like to be on the run from a television pastor and what kind of things would actually happen to your mind that would cause you to think that it's a good idea. Uh, in fact, here they note that uh, uh, advised that the security gate at the entrance to the driveway was damaged by unknown persons. That's because I drove a Cadillac straight through his front gate. This is what detectives notated about the safe robbery. And they're, they're talking to the attorney here. This is the burglary case number such and such has been suspended due to a lack of information to the items reported stolen. So he didn't give the exact, he, he was getting fishy about the answers to what exactly had been stolen. In order to reopen this case on the itemized list of the items stolen, including the value, with this information I can make the proper contacts to further investigate the matter. Also, I will need the name of the insurance carrier. And I, 
in the matter of the white powder that was found in Mr. Murdoch's closet, the lab results have not returned as of 5 1999. This is the first time in the police report that we have a white powder that's mentioned. But it, this gets better from here. The here we see a notation on 519. This is from 519. I received another letter from Mr. Murdoch's attorney who is now making false claims. Again, he is wanting to know the results of the found powder. He has not inquired about the burglary. So, at this, so at, uh, Mike Murdoch, he's lawyered up at this point, and everybody's concern is about this white powder that's in the closet. Okay? This complainant has hired an attorney and will not cooperate. So Murdoch's not cooperating now. He's listed his son as a suspect who also has the same attorney. Now let's look down here. A Jay Matthews called stating that he's a private detective hired by Murdoch to investigate this crime. He asked me if I had the results of the powder that was sent to the lab and when he could get those results. I have not discussed, so he had not discussed this powder with any one of the suspects including witnesses, I was not in the crime scene and did not mention cocaine at the scene. I did also, also did not pick up a metal box. I don't know what he's talking about with the metal box. The PI sent a fax to the SO, the sheriff's office, stating that our deputies messed up the scene and might have planted the powder. So at, the, at this point, uh, and I don't know whether it ultimately turned out to be cocaine or not in the closet, what I can tell you is that it seems like that everybody from Murdoch's side of the table believed that in fact it was cocaine that the deputies had and they were holding out. So he had, he had, uh, he had attorneyed up at that point. Now, these are Mike Murdoch's, these are his financial records for the years leading up to the safe robbery. And as I mentioned a moment ago, it had come to my, it was, it was told to me on many, many, many occasions that Mike Murdoch was going around the country and before large audiences and perhaps even on television stating that he had lost millions. That would in fact be a lie if he said that. In fact, the 125000 that he claimed was missing was not true. Here we have his records. For 1998, he holds at $2.64 million. In 1999, $2.96 million. Now we see our first bump comes the following year, 5.27 million. 2002, 9.22 million. Following year, 14.56 million. So his ministry had been holding at what was at least claimed of about $3 million a year prior to this point. Now, in my personal opinion, having been inside that closet many, many times, there was a lot more than $3 million worth of valuables in there. Nevertheless, that was what he was claiming the income for the ministry was. I was able to buy a beautiful Cessna Citation jet cash. A few months later, bought another jet worth three times what that one was. Here's some notations from the Fort Worth Star Telegram. Darren Barbie did a write-up in 2004 on Murdoch and his ministry. The records show that Murdoch had his most successful year in 2003, raising more than $14.5 million, most of it from people across the United States. Let's look at another article here. Um, Murdoch wanted to start a ch church to avoid public scrutiny of the ministry's finances, said Randy Forrett, who was the ministry's general manager from May 2003 to December 2003. Here's what Randy went on to say to the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. The intent was to create a shield from anyone that might be interested, said Forrett, who left the ministry after becoming uncomfortable with its practices. Well, it took a long time for me to get my life back in order, to get my head screwed on straight after interactions that actually began with a television pastor. Bottom line, at bare minimum, Mike Murdoch Ministries was at least dishonest about their initial claims to the Sheriff's Department, to law enforcement, about the safe robbery, smothered in the haze of the same type of nefarious activities that you read all throughout from start to finish in my book Thieves or and that's a minimum that's a bare minimum at maximum he was doing exactly what I get emails about exactly what my understanding was even at the time that all this happened he was in fact going around and telling folks at seminars and meetings and churches that he had lost me I've lost the sun moon and stars when in fact 
that wasn't true. But if you think about it, that's the mother of all sales pitches you could actually go around with. So my question would be this. You sitting there on the other side of the screen. Anybody remember writing a real big check? And this isn't all jet planes and Bibles. Even if you don't remember giving money to Mike Murdoch, or you don't know anything about the safe robbery, you don't know anything about any of these events, enjoy a copy of my book, Thieves. This is the true story of the Mike Murdoch safe robbery. I'm Trey Smith. Thank you for listening. At that point, I was officially on the run from a TV pastor. Just call us and say you can expect my seat of a thousand. Thank you.